Welcome back to the weekend wrap. No production, just my thoughts. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an associate, an enemy, any and all in between. It's appreciated. I'm hoping to have a very, very quick weekend wrap this week. But before anything, I do have to give a uh, big condolences and rest in peace to Kazuki and Noguchi and Carl Weathers, famously or more famously known as Apollo Creed from the Rocky franchise. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I remember watching the, uh, the Anaguchi and Satsumi fight and I thought that was like a really, really good fight. I felt uh, sorry for a couple of times, obviously, um, Anaguchi got some knockdowns. Some of them I felt were harshly scored, others more legitimate, but he was doing very well throughout that fight. And then, yeah, you see him right at the end of the fight, uh, things happened. Um, he started needing help to be sort of carried out and ultimately so came to his to his injuries in the um, in the change room and then subsequently the hospital afterwards so yeah uh, I guess prayers well wishes with his family and the same with Mr. Carl Weathers 76 uh, icon one of the uh, biggest icons in the sport of boxing but his career spanned well beyond just like you know boxing movies so yeah yeah uh, big up to to him and obviously well wishes to his family moving on to this weekend obviously we had the uh i guess we had the news about the fury and Usyk um postponement which we spoke about on friday we now know that that is going to be taking place on the 18th of may um and it's been stipulated that if either guy pulls out of that fight for any reason they will be forfeited 10 million dollars i think it was i've got some i got some uh thoughts on that but i'm going to give those right at the end of the video let's talk about the weekend so let's start off with the card that took place in las vegas i actually started at 10 at 10 o'clock vegas time which would have been 1 uh 1 p.m uh eastern time so like new york and stuff which was um yeah, I'm sure that the guys over there, depending on, I guess, what time they, they had to wake up in the morning. Um, I'm sure that would have been interesting. You know, you wake up at eight and then you're fighting by 10. No time for breakfast or anything else. But, you know, it is what it is. It happened. And um, I haven't seen every single fight. I, I was trying to watch some of the undercard, but I was caught between two different shows. So realistically, I'm just going to speak from the uh, Khalil Cole fight. Now, I thought that he was going to go points on that one. I thought that he would win comfortably, but I thought it would be a points victory. And obviously, I did say you never quite know the level um, that someone has been competing at when they're coming from, like, you know, Mexico or, you know, South Africa or something like that. But you know that they have very tough um, domestic, uh, sort of like domestic level competition. So you can never be too sure. Well, Khalil Cole made light work of a sooner. Um, two rounds um, and he got him out with several body shots so I guess they always say a lot of them will say like Mexicans Argentinians that uh, they've got very sort of tough heads very durable up top but maybe the body is the way to go and that's exactly what Khalil Ko did he's one of he's been one of my favorite prospects in the light heavyweight division um, for a while I have said that um, wasn't too happy with how he started his pro career but he's definitely been on the right track since and i'm looking forward to seeing um where he goes moving forward after that you had johnny fisher of romford ball now i did say that i expect him to get dimitri uh, uh dimitri bezos out of there um no later than the third round but i was expecting possibly the second well he got him out of there in the first um there you could have maybe said the ref could have allowed it to go on a little bit longer purely for the fact of, you know, he landed some shots, some was being blocked, some was being dodged. Um, Bezos wasn't really going to get into it as such, but maybe, you know, Johnny Fisher could have punched himself out a bit. Then he's got to take a bit of a break and maybe you see how that transpires. But, I mean, Bezos, at the end of the day, he didn't respond in like 10, 12 seconds of, of you know, a barrage. And those weren't the only heavy shots he took in the round. So I haven't got a big complaint about it. 
just think maybe it could have gone on a little bit longer. But hey, um, then we went to Austin, Amo Williams against uh, what's the guy's name? Mbomba Yasa, but I can't remember his first name. Um, Ar- Ar- Armin, Armel, I think it's like Armel. Yeah, Armel Mbomba Yasa, who I'd never seen before, but he was game. He came to fight. Um, seemed a bit tentative like at the start obviously um had the height he had sort of the height disadvantage but you know he threw he did actually throw some decent shots landed some decent shots um but williams was just in control for the majority of the fight he was um very sturdy very very comfortable very composed for the most part also landed some pretty good body work himself and ultimately yeah um the punch he landed at the end of the seventh round to end the fight um you know which slid Mbomba Yasa through the ropes yeah it was a it was a peach of a shot and that could definitely end up on the uh you know the KO of the year awards come the end of the year because it was um perfectly executed and he put he, he put his whole entire frustration and life struggle behind that punch and it was a it was a peach so if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out Moving on to the main event, you had uh, Conor Ben versus uh, Peter Dobson. Now, I had actually said in the previous video, I expect this to be a very tough test for Conor. Um, I knew that Peter is the type of person that he doesn't start very fast. So him fighting in like the team combat league is not a great uh, is not a great indicator of his record because he's not the kind of person that goes in there to win the fight in the first round he's the kind of person who wants to sort of take a bit of take a bit out of you take a bit away from you and then sort of take it down the back stretch and ultimately that's exactly what he did here he weathered a storm in the first two to three rounds um you know touching Connor back occasionally but really was just there trying to soak up the pressure, stay defensively responsible. And there's a lot of times, as I said, you might think a shot's about to go through, but the arm's there to guard it. He, he turns his stance slightly to just take away some of the impact of the shot. And he's very tough, very durable. Um, and yeah, I kind of had a feeling it would play out that way. I did predict that Conor Ben would win on points um, and the prediction stuck. Now, with regards to... A lot of people saying, oh, well, now that he's quote unquote off the juice, all of a sudden he ain't got no knockout power. I think that narrative there is kind of tired and played out. I mean, look, he was never, a, you know, a one punch knockout artist anyway. He was never the biggest of punches. He never has been. If we don't, if we go back just as far as 2020, remember he fought Sebastian Formella, who was, you know, a young fairly spry contender he went the distance with Sebastian Formella then obviously he got the um the Vargas KO which everyone believes shouldn't have been stopped when it was stopped anyway um which obviously happened in the first round but then he had the Granados fight he went the distance with Granados you know then you get the Chris Algieri fight and the Chris Van Heerden fight but let's not forget both Chris Algieri and Chris Van Heerden were well past their best Chris Algieri is not even a welterweight like he was really um at his best he was a light welter and he was about he'd been out of the ring for a a year and a half I think two years before that so when we're looking at who a lot of the people kind of been knocked out they were pretty much like faded opposition they were older or maybe smaller or just well past their best or have been in one too many wars that's just kind of what it is, you know. Then you put him in against a live, fresh Orozco, who is a naturally bigger guy than him, Mexican, very tough Mexican, you know, and a young guy who we also then found out, you know, was on some form of substance himself afterwards, which hasn't, we've not heard anything about that since. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you don't knock him out. Then you also don't knock, knock out a guy that's, Another undefeated guy, never tasted defeat, very defensively responsible, uh, very defensively astute and a guy that's, you know, come in good shape. And another guy that's yet again, bigger than you as as such, as a, just a naturally bigger person. I don't read too much into the, the lack of knockouts. I mean, it's a good narrative for people that don't have any comprehension of either the sport or Conor Ben's record as a whole. Yeah, okay, you saw it. He had two back-to-back 
good looking knockouts or, or stoppage finishes and then he's had two fights go the distance but if you look down the entire record you know even before let's say okay before the um the Orozco fight he was um 21 and 0 with 14 KOs does that scream KO artist to you? No, like KO artist would be 18 knockouts, 19 knockouts, 20 knockouts. 14 just means you've got good power and you have the ability to get people out of there, but you don't always do it. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, now, obviously, if every single fight moving forward is a points vi victory, I mean, depending on who it's against, you know, because if every single person you're fighting is young, hungry, fresh guys, don't know how to lose, never been beaten or been beaten once, but they've never been knocked out before, then really and truly, it's not, you know, it, it can't just say, oh, well, it's because of the juice, it's because of uh, the substances. Like, no, it's, that's a bit too much of a simplistic take. Um, similar to, of, well, anyway, I'm never going to get into it. That's, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, let me know how you guys feel down below. But I felt that it was a good performance from both guys. I do think that... Um, Pete Dobson deserved more than two rounds on um, two cards and one round on the other. Um, I didn't, I, I'm going to be real, I wasn't scoring. I was kind of watching it um, just as a as an overall whole. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to say oh, who won and who didn't win. Like Conor Ben clearly won the fight. But to me, from what I was watching, I saw Dobson take at least three, four rounds um, in there. There was times where, you know, Connor obviously he's, he's coming back, but his shots ain't really landing too clean. Dobson is taking over those fights and he's, his punches are having, they look like they're having more of an effect on Connor than Connor's punches look like they was having an effect on him, like especially towards the latter half of the fight. But ultimately, Dobson lost. So, you know, I, I guess whether he got an extra round or two as consolation is neither here nor there. Uh, right, now moving on to the uh, boxer card. Now, I didn't, I, I managed to see the Francesca Hennessy fight on, um, uh, what was it, the before the, the live broadcast, the undercard bit. Fine, um, you know, it was, uh, I feel like the, the other girl was a little bit hard done by. Like, you would think that when you bring in an opponent with, you know, a Spanish speaker that doesn't speak English, we've got British referees over here that speak Spanish like why not get one of them to to be in there so that even when you even if you're calling um you know there's certain words that you have to call and you're supposed to train each fighter knows that that word means x y z so when you say break step back they know okay break means stop or stop means stop step back means move away but then every word outside of that like the guys in the corner trying to talk to her as if she's as if she's from Essex like he, I don't think she understands what he's saying half the time, and it would have helped if you had a if you had someone in there that at least had basic Spanish to say, you know, don't hold, don't hit on the break, stop stop holding the head or whatever, just so that she okay, that's what I've been stopped for. Because there's certain times she's in the corner to me from what I saw, looking lost. Like, what's the problem? And then obviously she gets the point taken off, and I think even then she's like, well, why? What what stood like? Why did I get a point? To, I don't understand what's going on here. Now she wasn't there to win anyway, so that's neither here nor there in that aspect. But I just feel like they could have at least made it a little bit easier for for her to sort of you know understand what was going on in that moment. I haven't seen the Jamie TKV fight yet, so I can't comment on that one. Um, I was busy when that fight was taking place. Um, I didn't see the um, Caroline Dubois and Miranda Reyes fight from the start. I saw it from, I think, the fourth round on. Um, what I will say is, obviously, I expected Caroline to win. I did predict, again, that it will go points. Um, when you got those, you know, these young, hungry girls, especially like um, tough, you know, American, Houston, Texas, clearly of some form of uh, Hispanic descent. Miranda just, to me, looked like, no matter what, she wasn't gonna. She wasn't gonna um, be an easy night's work for Caroline, and from what I saw, that's exactly how it played out. Now, to be fair, Caroline won every round conclusively, from what I saw. But Miranda Reyes did not. Uh, she didn't come to lay down. She didn't come to survive. She tried every single round, and she had her 
best success every time that she went on the front foot rather than trying to either counter or, or sort of stay stay back and trying to box with Caroline. Being a naturally smaller girl with the smaller reach, um, the, the slower of the two, her best bet was to be on the front foot. Now, let me address something before I carry on with this one. Because again, Caroline, great performance, done what she needed to do. No issues there. Capricorn girl, good girl. Um, all that good stuff. Like She won convincingly, no dispute in that. My issue is with the commentary. Every single time that Caroline got caught, and there was several times, there was one time she even got hit with a three-piece combo, the... You had Andy Clark and Matthew Macklin talking about other menial, irrelevant stuff when the punches are landing. But any time that Caroline landed a good shot, they could have been midway in conversation. Oh, good shot there from Caroline. Did you see that? The only person who at any point was even like motioning to, to give credit to Miranda Reyes when she was letting off any good work was Tasha Jonas. Um, and that to me is what they need to stop doing. It's not just like obviously Sky Sports and Boxer, a lot of a lot of them do it. Uh, Darren Barker does it a lot with the with the zone as well. Um, the only people I know that sort of seem to uh, that you know is um, Barry Jones is always very good at calling the action on both sides when he sees something. Um, Sonny Edwards very good at doing it. Tasha Jonas is good at doing it. Um, and Sergio, uh, I think Sergio Mora as well is is quite good at um, you know giving praise to both to both fighters when they're doing good work but yeah like obviously i know caroline's a star she's the she's the heir apparent she's the one that everyone's there for but like at least give the girl some credit oh yeah she's she's come tougher than we thought she was gonna be oh you know she's you know she's uh she's she's trying she's just not having much success but then every time she's having success you're not highlighting it yeah okay it may not have changed the scorecards but at least it's giving the you know the public a good and honest representation of what's happening in the fight. And that was one thing that really annoyed me throughout the entire time I was watching I was watching that fight. But um, again, big up to Caroline and big up to Miranda. You know what? I want to see her I want to see her again. Um I don't know to to what level. I don't know if there's anyone else that she she can face. Maybe, you know, maybe uh if the title fight doesn't happen next, she, she might get a, a little bit just for her. They might start doing that comparison between Ferreira and Dubois. Okay, who done it better? Or maybe after Rhiannon Dixon has her fight against Kara Bahal, maybe um, she could fight Miranda Reyes as a first defense and if, see if she can do a better job than Caroline done. And you and you, you start to build up those those rivalries that way. So we'll, we'll see. Um, after that, Ben Whitaker against Khalid Gradia. Um, I actually, I funny enough, I thought this one might go points. So I thought Gradia, you know, he's a tough guy, doesn't get stopped often, and I didn't think that he would really um, play in too much to the uh, to the showboating. But to be fair, the surgeon was surgically precise um, throughout the majority of the fight. There's a couple of times he, the some of the showboating was a bit excessive to the point he actually one time he he actually ended up getting hit in the back of the head because of the showboating um which was quite funny but he he admit he said all right you know what it's not your fault that was me fine um turned his back uh doing you know a big spin in the ring which obviously that was the one time that i would say yeah that's the one that you, you can't do because you can't have your back to your opponent at any time of your own volition uh outside of that everything else i pretty much enjoyed it was it was just a, a good performance and obviously it was body shots that got kelly grady out of there so um big ups to him and now ben's had two back-to-back -back camps hopefully no injuries no niggles if uh, i think they want to get him back out again in on the uh the march card um if they can do that hey all more power to him. Like, let's keep him active at this point. Um, provided he's not injured, like, if he can be out on that bad blood card, brilliant, and then get him out on another card, like, in maybe start of June, and then, yeah, like, a two more for the end of the year. Have If he can get five five fights in this year, brilliant stuff for, for Ben, so he can really get his, um, get his career kicking on. But he's a talent. Whether you... I've, I, said on, I said on Twitter, it's like... He is box office. Whether you love him or hate him, he will be a box office star um, because you're going to tune in, especially if he, if he keeps winning. Uh, you're going to tune in to see him either get knocked out or you're going to tune in to see him like knock someone out or do something outrageous during the fight. 
So big ups to him. Uh, Adam Azim and Enoch Paulson. Um, Azim got the victory. I wasn't that impressed with his performance, if you want me to be real. I thought Paulson, while they didn't give him any rounds, actually, I think I gave him the second round um, and I had him competitive in the fourth. But there were several times there um, he was basically, he was pull countering or he was um, shooting. He was shooting off of Adam Azim's shot and was catching him quite comfortably. And he was also defending himself very well. There was very, there was no time that I watched that particular fight and I saw him in any real big trouble. There was no shot that um, that Adam Azim hit him with that I thought, oh, that, that one sort of took him away, wobbled him a bit. He seemed fairly comfortable, fairly composed throughout the entire fight. Um, while Azim was winning the rounds, like he wasn't, to me, again, he didn't look spectacular. Um, I can still see why he's not been put in there with any punches at all because his defensive lapses are very pronounced. And while they keep trying to say that he's above the European level, I don't think he is. Um, you put him in there against a domestic guy that can crack and that he's going to be in problems. So as far as I can see, while I'm not saying he's not, he's still talented, he's talented, but if you're trying to push him towards world level, are he saying he wants to win a world title? by the end of this year no nah, it's not going to happen um, I mean we've, we've got Dalton Smith against um, Jose Zepeda in April like I don't think I think if Dalton Smith wins that fight you've got a clear you've got a clear indication of who is at what level um, and to say that he's above um, Enoch, Enoch Paulson after Paulson basically had he had to retire due to a, a very bad dislocation of his of his right arm, that's not you know that's not a, a great advertisement. Um, Shane McGuigan almost laughing off the, the thought of an Ishmael Barroso fighting Adam Azim. Uh, well, don't laugh that one off at all because Mumra will get him. I I've got no I've got no doubts in my mind that his counter punching and his experience. His timing will beat the speed of Azim because Azim does too many things defensively poor when he's, uh, you know, when he's actually, especially when he's on the attack. When he's holding back and he's trying to counter, you, he has a little bit more about him. But when he's trying to attack, those arms don't come back to the to the chin quick enough. His head doesn't move off the line quick enough. He gets caught. And make no mistake, if you put him up against, um, if you put him up against, Ishmael Barroso, I'm taking Mamra uh, every day, for especially right now. That being said, move to the main event. And this one, obviously, it was one of those fights where, um, you know, I had everything um, hoping that Dan Aziz could do the job. Obviously, we come from the same same area. We went to the same school. Um, you know, there's only a couple years difference between us in age. So I was very, very... Um, willing and keen for him to do well but as you saw on basis picks I did predict that he would lose and I actually thought he I thought he would get stopped and it's not and again I said if it was April if it was the October fight I would have actually had him as the winner I truly believe he would have won back then but the whole thing with the back I just wasn't to me it just felt like this could be a problem and even in the ring I mean to be fair it was kind of both guys but neither guy looked that explosive in there or that sharp or as sharp as like you would expect them to be I feel like Joshua Bawatsi with the level of inactivity that he's had as of late he's more used to coming back into a fight after a layoff whereas Dan is very he has to be in the ring just constantly grinding it out and he even kind of said that to me when we had our little chat on Thursday that you know I mean it's only six months some guys are out of the ring for a year but look I am at my best when I'm more active when I'm just out there like constantly and constantly in the gym learning and improving and in those first couple of rounds you could kind of tell both guys looked a bit sluggish and a bit slow it did pick up after that throughout the sort of the next few rounds and next few rounds but you know the sharpness wasn't really there from either guy the the body work was the best that both guys employed but in terms of throwing those sharp short shots the straights um and all of that the the person who probably had the 
the most sharpness in terms of any single shot was Dan Aziz with the jab. And even then, that only sort of really kicked in from about around three or four onwards. So while it was a very good fight to watch, don't get me wrong. I'm just, what I'm saying is based on how I feel that fight would have played out in October as opposed to now in February, to me, there was a noticeable drop off. And with regards to the actual fight itself, to be fair, look, the back didn't look like it caused any real issues, but we'll never know. Like we, we, we're not going to know how much of a how much of a hindrance it was. Um, he looked like he was moving pretty well, a bit slower than usual, but still pretty well. Maybe there was times he was thinking about it. I don't know. On Joshua Boatsi's side, he was um, also, you know, again, he, he sort of took him a bit of time to get into it. He never fully got his sharpness until. I think about around seven, I think so around seven and around eight was when he really started to let the shots go well. Um, and I think I predicted that it would end in the, I think on here I said between the eighth and the ninth, but I think on my, on my predictions league, I said the 11th. So let's talk about the 11th round. Actually, you know what, let's go through the fight and I'll give you my scorecard, right? So, um, Round one, I scored to Joshua Boatsi. Round two, I scored to Dan Aziz. Round three, I scored to Dan Aziz. Round four, I scored to Dan Aziz. Uh, if you guys want to know the reasons why, you can go on my Twitter X. My whole scorecard's there. It tells you the reasons for each round. Uh, round five, I scored for Boatsi. Round six, I scored for Aziz. Round seven, I scored for Boatsi. Round eight, I scored for Boatsi. Round nine, I scored for Aziz round 10. I scored for Aziz. And then rounds 11 and rounds 12, I scored for Bawatsi. So I had this, I had the fight six rounds apiece. I had it a draw. Funny enough, when the 11th round came, I actually had Dan winning that round up until the point of the first knockdown. And I'm saying it here. I've looked at it three times. I was actually watching the fight with my dad. And on both of them, both myself and him said, oh, not, oh that's a slip. He, oh, he slipped on the canvas because obviously they was both slate sliding around the canvas for a couple of rounds prior to that. We had both noticed it. So both my dad and myself were like, no, how are you counting that? That's a slip ref. And then the second one was even more egregious because again, like you... The way he's obviously the way he's landed on the ground and the way his feet have come off of it, like you can tell again, it's a massive slip. Um, but I guess as a, a, a some form of punch did connect to what degree you counted it. But yeah, so I was like, OK, well, that's just gone from a, a 10 nine Aziz for me to a, a, a 10 seven to Joshua Boatsi. So that happened. And obviously in the 12th round, you know, Dan started to get worked over. Um, you know, he did well to survive. Um, you know, a couple of a couple of very sh very strong combos from Boatsi. But at that point, both guys was knackered. You could see both of them with their with their mouths open at that point. Um, yeah, it was just it was a, a very good sort of fight in that sense. Like round eleven, I feel like was. To me, I feel like it was a key round, but maybe it wasn't. Looking at the scorecards and look. I know that my scorecard wasn't the same as the judges. I don't know what their scorecards were. I'd like to see, like to see what they were, what they gave. But my scorecard also was, um, it wasn't that far off. Uh, both myself and Danny Glover from Fight Fan TV, we had it one round difference. Like I had it six six, he had it seven five. So um, the the scorecards that was like one seventeen one oh nine. I yeah, I don't like those to tell me that Dan Aziz only got three rounds in that fight. I, I can't see it. As I, I just can't. Um maybe there was there were some rounds in the early the early part. I'll say that I was scoring them. I was taking note of the body work from Boatsi, but I was also noticing that not everything from the body was getting through. But there was a lot of good solid clean shots, clean landing shots to the head from Aziz. And so in some of those rounds I was giving um, Aziz maybe a bit more consideration for the fact that he was still as busy as Josh, if not busier, and landing the more 
the more eye-catching shots up top, but I was taking note of the body work as well. So there was a couple of rounds where I could have gone either way on them. Um, and you'll see that on my thing. I just gave it to Aziz because this was more eye-catching than that. They was both working, but it was very tight. Um, so I'm sure some people would give it the other way because Bawatsi is the home, the more of the like the A side in, in the in the actual fight itself. So yeah, it is what it is. What it is it's what you like. I had it six rounds apiece. I think it was definitely a lot closer than the fight than the scorecards uh, read. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't mean anything. Doesn't change anything. Uh, Dan still lost. I did think that that would be the case. So even when I'm scoring, it's not. I remember I've predicted for him to lose. So I'm not going to now try and score a fight favorably to prove that I'm right because ultimately that would make my scorecard wrong. That would make my prediction wrong, which is not something that makes any sense. But yeah, that's all sort of my thoughts on it. Um, they had their post. They had their post fight now. Uh, Joshua Bawatsi is number one uh, with the WBA eventually he will get called as a mandatory they're talking about the yard fight Dan Aziz obviously he wants to come back out so maybe now he can fight someone else I would I would don't want his next fight or even his fight after that to be Craig Richards that's too much of a, a conflict of interest for me um, if you know you know uh, but outside of that yeah if you can get any of the other domestic guys to start off with and then maybe somewhere down the line you do that one fine but I just don't want to see that for for now like I don't like when two people not only two people that I necessarily like but two people that I know and that I know very well that's going to be one of those ones where I wouldn't even do a video on it like I'm not giving I'm not going <laughs> to give the prediction it's, it's too close to home but um yeah look that's pretty much that I'm going to leave it there it was a decent weekend of boxing um you know, some things could have been a lot better. Some things uh, could have been a lot worse overall. I mean, we got what we got. Oh, uh, so going back to my thing earlier on, where I was talking about Fury and Usyk and the fact it's being planted for the 18th of May. Something tells me, and this is just me, right? I'm going to say this. You guys can run with it. Do what you do what you want afterwards. Something is now telling me that. If this fight is literally going to happen three months after this cut, when you're not really going to be able to spar for at minimum six to seven weeks, I've got a feeling that cut happened a couple of weeks ago. I've got a feeling it happened maybe, or it, it started, it opened up maybe two or three weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, and they was trying to manage it. And then maybe it just, it got to a point where it wasn't closing the way they wanted it to close. And so they said, no, nah, do you know what? We're going to have to push this one back. John Fury on a couple of interviews said, um, you know, he didn't think that he thought that February was too soon and that uh, Tyson would need more time, but we are where we are. Several people have said that we think he needs more time. We think he needs more time. And then all of a sudden this happens and it's only pushed back three months so 12 weeks as opposed to what most people believed it would be which would be like late June early July I could be chatting the biggest of shit but I got a feeling that that cut happened prior to um Thursday or Friday and it just was kept hush hush until until now but hey you guys do with that what you want um Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you on the next video. Don't forget to tune in to the Boxing Debate Show with myself, October Red, Danny Glover, and Maestro. A boxing, uh, which will be 8 o'clock tonight. Um, that will be streaming on all of our channels. So you can watch it streaming live from my channel, October's, Maestro's, Danny's, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, tune into that where we're going we're gonna to have some deep dives into several other nice interesting topics as well as what's going on this weekend but until then uh, i've got content coming up towards the end of the week don't forget monday night smoke don't forget the breakdown on tuesday and more content to follow after that so until then peace